It is a program of choice, Health Affair on AIT, a platform where we focus on public ed issues, challenges about women and children with a view to providing lasting solutions. I am your regular anchor, Ushua Mowa Daniels, and you are welcome. Our focus this week is on drug abuse, but first is the new segment. to guide healthcare providers in Lagos State to provide safe and lawful abortion services within the ambit of the law, the state government through the Ministry of Health has developed a policy document on safe termination of pregnancy. The 40-page document tagged Lagos State Guidelines on Safe Termination of Pregnancy for Legal Indications sets out guidelines for safe termination of pregnancy within the ambit of the criminal law of Lagos State. Presenting and launching the document at the stakeholders' engagement, the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Ministry of Health, Dr. Olusha Gogboye, noted that the production of the policy document was born out of the need to provide evidence-based data and information for health workers in public and private sectors who have the requisite skills and training necessary to provide safe terminations to reduce preventable deaths. Ogboye explained that while the therapeutic termination of pregnancy is permissible under the law in Lagos State, absence of clear guidelines has stalled the effective implementation at appropriate levels of care, resulting in preventable deaths. As you are aware, abortion is legal only to save the life of the mother throughout most of the country. In 2011, the Lagos State Assembly updated the criminal code providing for abortion to save the life and protect the physical health of the woman. While physical health is covered under the Lagos legal framework, services conforming to the law have not been available uh, in the Lagos State Health sector. In 2018, the Safe Engage project, in collaboration with the Lagos State Ministry of Health, hosted by the Society for Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Nigeria, SOGON, and with support from the Population Reference uh, Bureau, worked with key opinion leaders in Lagos and the Southwest region to develop a tailored advocacy tool for terminations within the legal context. The advocacy messages focused on two immediate, uh, immediate outcomes, ensuring that safe abortion services were available within legal indications in Lagos, then domesticating the Violence Against Persons uh, Prohibition Act, supporting women to terminate a pregnancy caused by rape or incest. To guide the implementation, one of the follow-up recommendations of the project was the adaptation of the national standards and guidelines for safe termination of pregnancy within legal indications within the Lagos state context. The Federal Ministry of Health had developed and disseminated the national guidelines on safe termination of pregnancy, which highlights a compendium of conditions and circumstances under which termination of pregnancy could be initiated. The guideline was intended to build the capacity of health professionals to identify pregnancies for which legal termination could be instituted. Mary Stopes International in Nigeria, in collaboration with the Population Reference Bureau, proposed to support the state government to adapt the document. The process included technical meetings to discuss sections of the law supporting safe abortion and conditions permitted within the legal framework to save the lives and the physical health of mothers. He added that stakeholders in the state health sector worked with key opinion leaders in Lagos and Southwest region to develop a tailored advocacy tool. He pointed out that the advocacy message on the Safe Engage project focused on two immediate outcomes, including ensuring that safe abortion services were available within legal indications in Lagos and domesticating the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act supporting women to terminate a pregnancy caused by rape or incest. For legal indication, and because we looked at if a woman has cancer of the cervix and is having cytotoxic therapy or radiotherapy 
and, and she's pregnant, that baby cannot survive. So there is no reason for that pregnancy to continue. We put that. Now, if a, if a woman has severe cardiac disease, heart disease, and I'm, I have said this before, one of my colleagues who, whose wife had severe cardiac disease, I delivered the first, I delivered the second. And I told her that he didn't need to have more. The, 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 the husband is a doctor, but the husband is a professor now. I said he didn't have to have more, so we need to tie your tubes. That's permanent form of family planning. And I thought I was uh, communicating. The next thing was that um, she went ahead to have a, a pregnancy, but died with that pregnancy. Something that we need to really take serious, and I think it's something that, uh, that the time has come for. The other thing I wanted to also point out is, this seems to be one of those things that the significance really will not be felt at the time it happens. I think it's one of those things that we're going to look back on in a lot of years to come and say, wow, see how many lives this has saved, that this was just the right thing to do at that time. So I really thank everyone uh, that has been a part of this. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, says it received safety information from the European Rapid Alert System that a cosmetic product, placentine hair lotion, has been banned. The product is said to contain a mixture of preservatives, which are forbidden in leave-on cosmetics. These preservatives found in many liquids and personal care products have been linked to lung toxicity, allergic reaction, and possible neurotoxicity. The chemicals inhibit bacterial growth in cosmetic products, but they are most commonly used as a mixture in products. The agency implored members of the public in possession of the product to discontinue sale and use and hand over stock to the nearest NAFDAQ office. Lagos State Government announced commencement of mass administration of medicines, MAM, for school-aged children against schistosomiasis, an acute and chronic neglected tropical disease caused by parasitic worms in non-local government areas of the state where the disease is endemic. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Dr. Lushegun Oboye, who made the announcement, noted that the mass administration of medicines will be implemented in nine schistosomiasis endemic local government areas, including Koshofe, Etiosa, Oshodi Solo, Ikorodu, Alimosho, Ikeja, Agege, Ifakojaye, and Surulere. Oboye added that the MAM will be implemented in two phases, explaining that the first phase implementation will run from the 29th of June to 8th of July 2022 in the aforementioned local government areas, while the second phase of implementation will commence immediately at four other local government areas at Jeromi, Felodu, Amuwa Dofi, Ibejuleki and Lagos mainland, where the disease is co-endemic with soy-transmitted helminths. Oboye added that the mass administration of medicines for schistosomiasis control and elimination is part of the broader goal for the control and elimination of neglected tropical diseases in Lagos State. Through of Almighty God, our service to humanity, I call. This project comprising a block of 10 units toilet facility, two unit stores, pipe bone water, with 4,000 liter overhead tank, is one of the biggest commissioned by the district governor, Lion Kayodio Shinugar. For the 2021-2022 Lions year. We came here for a project that we saw that there is no good talent for the children to use. And that is why we have taken it upon ourselves as a non-governmental organization to provide this lamp of tech talents for the children. This club that is just in the second year has pulled itself together to deliver this wonderful project. This club has 
basement being a young club has proven that Laodice is a very serious business. I'm here again to see that another uh, edifice is uh, commissioning in the premises of uh, Jupri Martin's uh, primary school. Uh, it's a big uh, achievement for the school and the Komoo community uh, in particular, IAK in general. Let us do our utmost best, put it to good value, put it to good use, for the good use of the children. What we have here is built uh, four unit toilets for the boys, four unit toilets for the girls, one unit toilet for the teachers, the male teachers, one unit toilet for the female teachers. This latest project is not the first done by the Lagos Metropolitan Lions Club for Jubro Martins Government Primary School in Dukbamu area of Lagos State, Nigeria. I remember the first time we came inside the rain. We distributed school bags, textbooks, exercise books, and other writing material right there. So many of them. I cannot do it again. Um, Lions Club is located uh, in every country of the world. Uh, we are over 100 years old. And uh, we are playing uh, our part to help uh, uh, government in uh, putting smiles on the faces of people. Environmental uh, instruments. Then later they came back to give us books and bags, writing materials. They have been there for us since we started this academic year. Lagos Metropolitan Lions Club was chartered two years ago, and because the president, Lion Ajayi Folajimi, and his team are passionate about impacting human lives positively. The club has done more than what is expected within a short period of time. If I call Lagos Metropolitan Lions Club a kind of I'm not mistaken. It is in this regard that I will thank the president. He has deployed all Asana in his kit to make sure that this project comes to fruition. Seeing this, the Lord Almighty will bless you richly. Every of your hearts desire the Lord will give unto you in the name of Jesus. And uh, here, formerly we used to train the adults. I appreciate what you've done to us. God will give you more money to provide this for us. I am blood. And uh, this is one of the things that I witnessed today. It's a great job. And I know that. Uh, the people of this uh, Jubilee Martins, they will make use of the, of the project. Anyway, I do not have toilets. I want to say thank you to Lions Club. Thank you, Lions Club. And to say a big thank you to Lions Club for what we have done to our school. And I pray that God will bless you and enrich your pocket. Lions Club International is a non-political service organization established in 1917 by Melvin Jones in Chicago. Illinois. At a time like this, when Nigeria and several countries of the world are confronted with insecurity, hunger, and other humanitarian crises, the world will be a better and safer place for all if everyone will have the act and attitude of service to humanity like lions do. On behalf of the Kenya Unique Lions Club, we have a public to prepare for public use the block of toilets at the uh, Ethical Church Primary School near Lagos. This block of toilet facility was used and donated to African Church Primary School in Lagos by Kenya Unique Lions Club to support for this to Nigeria under the leadership line of Lion Oli Yomi and Detuji MTF NSF President 2021-2022 Lions Service Year. With this block of six rooms toilet facility built and donated to African Church Primary School in Mero area of Lagos State by the Keja Unique Lions Club, the students will no doubt begin to enjoy good hygiene.
Lion Adetunji Oriomi, and his service-oriented team went as far as stepping out of their district to get this project accomplished. My club um, has the responsibility to end our lions here with a service uh, legacy project. So we went around searching for what and what we can do in our community that will be impactful. So we decided that we were going to look at the area of personal engineering improvements. And that's why we came here. Uh, after we discovered that uh, we could not do the project that we want to do, which is renovation of classrooms, then the community, I mean the school, uh, gave us uh, a desire, which is to build uh, a toilet facility for them, and that's what we have done today. We started with the foundation, the German floor, to the linter, and then to the roofing, and then the finishing of the... So we eventually we successfully built three, six blocks of toilets, three for the female, three for the male, there were three washing basins in each of the toilets and also we added three unilons for the male toilets and also the, also we installed the borehole tank for them so assist them in flushing the toilet, then we painted and make the facilities and um, even the school they are really happy that we exceeded their expectation. This project is something of joy because it's going to be beneficial to a lot of people, including the students and uh, the teachers. This is the first time such a thing has been done here, that a club, Lions Club, a non-governmental organization, will be bringing a, a laudable project into this community. This is the first time. Lions Club have done very well. That is why we want um, other organizations from uh, other organizations, NGO. Uh, so they come to it because, like I said, the government cannot do it alone. You can see beautiful things they have done today. And, uh, and uh, education is very important in the life of everybody. And we need a, a very a conducive environment for the school, for the students and for the teachers. I think we thank them, we give kudos to them for what they have done. We appreciate them. The climbers of all the projects that the club has embarked to do for the past 12 months, the legacy projects, and uh, we're happy that um, the laws are still true that from the Lane Foundation and to the total completion of the six toilet facility limited by Kaja Unique Dance Club to this great school today has come to reality. It was an emotional moment for the district governor, Lion Kayode Oshinuga, and Lion Oriyomi being the last project for his tenure as president of the Kaja Unique Lions Club. What your identity has demonstrated is that he is a true son of his father, true son of his parents. And he has really been taught, he has really been mentored, and he has allowed himself to be mentored. He remains a shining light, a guy we are so proud of in Lyonism, just like those before us, we are proud of his dad. We, we say we are so proud of your people. That even what I hear from other leaders about you is so encouraging, and I will say we should continue in your story. What you have seen here today is not the doing of the president alone, but the collective efforts of service-minded individuals who have come together to form what is known as Keja Unique Lions Club. We as a club, all that we do is to identify where there is a need and we try as much as possible to meet that need. And that has been fully demonstrated today by the generosity of people who are service-minded. I must Finally, I appreciate the game, all the support that was given to me as president of this great club. By the 30th of this month, I will cease to become president because somebody else will take over from me. But what we are clearly seeing is a demonstration of our commitment towards what we profess that we do. I thank every one of you. I thank the district governor who was present when we were laying the foundation of this place. 
We started the foundation laying ceremony here on the 7th of April and we delivered it in record time. I think we deserve a round of applause. So that was made possible by the fact that we got maximum support from all members. And that is why when people are united, they can do anything. So I indeed thank everybody for that support. And I'm going to sing this song. What shall I sing unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. The event provided an opportunity for Lion Oruyomi to speak on major projects done by the club during his service year. Uh, in December, we had a project that uh, was the beautification of the environment in Alausa in Ikeja. Uh, in January, we were at um, the home in uh, Alimosho, uh, where we gave them food items worth over 350,000 naira. Then afterwards, in February, we were at, um, um, we gave eyeglasses to um, people from our community. We also screened for cataracts and uh, glaucoma. Then after that, we also went to the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lassut, where we donated the sum of 370,000, 750,000 for cancer patients who have been unable to pay their, you know, um, their, their bills in the hospital, which uh, we were able to settle for them. So that's just a handful of some of the things that we have done this Lions here among uh, other things. By the 30th of June, 2022, the tenure of Lion Adetunji Oriyomi as president of Ikeja Unique Lions Club will end, but the good works accomplished during his time will remain a lasting legacy. <music> to improve food and nutrition security in the West African sub-region, some health experts have called for a more robust strategy to improve local production of catfish identified as the cheapest source of animal protein for human consumption. The experts who cut across different fields of veterinary medicine, food nutrition, and catfish farmers across the sub-region gave the advice at a workshop in Lagos where they noted that improved local production of catfish will help in enhancing the protein content of over 3 million children who suffer from severe acute malnutrition. There's a market best practice in terms of what kind of process methods are we utilizing and um, it's of course what you take in, what you eat actually has a lot to do with your health. So this workshop we're looking at best practices in terms of using the right equipment and the right um, inputs for processing of fish so that when the consumer, average person on the street buys and eats, okay, he's eating to the nourishment of the body and not taking in carcinogenic compounds that will compound the health issues in the life of the person that is um, um, eating them. Um, the fish. We import more than 2.5 billion dollars fish, which is not acceptable. We have our waters are very rich. We have um, a network of fresh water, uh, fresh waters in different countries from Guinea to Nigeria, including Senegal. If we can be able to bring down the cost using our local food ingredients available we we'll be able to bring down the cost of the average table-sized fish for the average Nigerian to be able to get good protein. Now, we need standardization in our processing equipment, such as um, freezing equipment, smoking technologies, things that you know can take us from where we were, doing it the local way into a much more advanced way. Catfish, in addition to being the cheapest source of animal protein, is also rich in nutrients, which include minerals, healthy fats, omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. We know that fish is a highly nutritive product for kids, for women, pregnant women. 95% of aquaculture production in Nigeria is catfish, but now uh, it's even more than 95% based on our findings. So catfish, it has value a lot in Nigeria. It has value in terms of uh, export, it has value in terms of job creation, in terms of processing, and so on. Nigeria, according to reports, is the largest producer of catfish in the West African sub-region, 
but the advent of COVID-19 pandemic adversely impacted on local production with corresponding increase in the price of the products. Extreme fatigue, muscular and cardiac issues are some of the symptoms that have been noticed in most survivors of the COVID-19 virus by experts at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Lutz. Though Nigeria has passed the emergency stage of the pandemic, the Director General, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, Dr. Daya Detifa, believes there is need for action to unravel the full details of these post-COVID-19 symptoms. It's a collection of a range of very different symptoms and signs that are exhibited um, by people who have tested or either tested previous, pre previously tested positive for COVID or indeed had mild or any. It's a collection of a range of very different symptoms and signs that are exhibited um, by people who have tested or either tested previous, pre previously tested positive for COVID or indeed had mild or any range of symptoms and fully recovered at the time from the acute episode. We will work along with colleagues, uh, our clinicians and others to um, properly describe this or take the information that they provide to help increase awareness. It, it becomes we are happy to get on information and, and provide uh, awareness on the subject because perhaps it will also make people take uh, COVID a bit more seriously and more importantly, maybe get vaccinated. So a date if I also give an update of the monkeypox disease. Uh, uh, as at the 19th of June, which is um, the 24th epi week for 2022, um, we had had a total of 41 confirmed monkeypox cases out of a uh, total of 162 suspected cases. So that's the figure for the year. And I hope that uh, clarifies and, well, uh, to add, unfortunately, we did have one death, a um, uh, 40 year old male um, organ transplant recipient who was on immunosuppressive um, treatment. And uh, we do know that there's an association between um, increased severity of monkeypox uh, and the increased risk of death in people who have uh, immunosuppressive conditions, whether uh, it's primary or secondary to um, 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 uh, drug treatments and the like. It was an opportunity for the Chief Medical Director, Lute, Professor Chris Bode, to also call for support in the completion of ongoing projects at the hospital. Uh, isolation center on fourth floor. This is uh, still on the drawing board because of some itches here and there. We will want you to please help us look into that. Uh, the, the site is, has been cleared, has been prepared. We're just waiting for that project to take off. Uh, because many times we take the whole work of such programs, such events, once they land in Lagos. Once again, I want to plead that uh, we will work very closely with you in all you do. Whatever way you want to call on us, Luth is ready to be part of, to be... Friday's visit to loot by the NCDC boss is the first of its kind since assumption of office as the DG. Oshuomowa Daniels, AIT News, Lagos. The increasing rate of infertility among young Nigerians is becoming a major concern to infertility experts who disclose that thousands of Nigerian couples are childless. The experts who likened the situation to a global pandemic at the conference in Lagos said an estimated 25% of Nigerian couples experience problems making babies and may require assisted reproduction technologies such as in vitro fertilization. We've been out of the country. We've read a lot about infertility. And it now occurs to us that it's not just within our environment, but it's a global challenge. It has now become a pandemic in quotes because it's not about race, it's not about age, but about the challenge of families not able to conceive. So there are various causes. Some are just infection, some are two, you know, tuber blockages, some are fibroids, you know, blocking the the womb. For me, there is a urologist. You know, we have the male factors 
and they almost they contribute to almost 50 percent each so both men and women are not innocent yes a woman gets pregnant but a man has up to 50 percent causes of infertility so there are many causes from infection to uh, people that are born with maybe uh, an inability to even have children so the causes are varied depending on what the individuals present with the call for mutual understanding between the couples instead of the usual blame game that points accusing fingers at the women. Ignorance kill. So instead of being quiet, you seek help. And then secondly, that there is no problem that can that defies solution. If the diagnosis has been you know made, if it is IVF, IU high, high VF, it can be um, surrogacy and it can be adoption, but there's a solution for every fertility problem that a family can be going through. It's when people have these issues, they should come to the hospital, meet specialists, so that they can determine what their problems are and prefer solutions that are available. What they should take home is that infertility is not a stigma, it's a challenge, and there are many alternatives to manage it. I'm very happy with the Para Foundation because they're actually helping women conceive, they're helping women to facilitate, facility, to do facilitated, sorry, um, for um, having children, and it's a very good foundation because they actually considered on both the men and the women, not just the women. So, which is something that I think that I'm happy with, and I love because I, lo I love children. So, I think I loved I, I congratulate them in what they're doing. Should we carry out pre-pregnancy assessment and counselling? for intending purpose. Something I've thought about, should intending purpose come and be screened? Should a lady, for instance, does she have the right to know that the gentleman that she wants to get married to has good spam count? Yes. So what happened to love? <laughs> I think she has a right to know. And therefore, I believe that we should start carrying out pre-marriage pre, pre, uh, or pre-marital counseling and assessment of couples. Couples, according to the experts, are regarded as infertile when they are unable to get pregnant after one year of marriage. Medical laboratory scientists have been advised to adhere strictly to safety standards to avoid misdiagnosis that can compromise the health of patients. Speakers at the forum with the theme, Quality Medical Laboratory Practice in a Recessed Economy, who gave this chart noted that the high cost of reagents and other operating equipment has greatly affected operations in the practice, giving room for quackery. The number one problem we have is uh, quackery. Number two is an uh, energy problem, and um, number three is the scarcity of professionals. Because now, a lot, because of the economic environment we have in Nigeria now, a lot of our young guys are traveling out of the country, and uh, that's the detriment of the medical uh, health care in Nigeria. They need to map out what you call a policy, okay, and that policy define exactly what aspect of laboratory service is all about. When you are now implementing that policy, when you are now holistically working on the process and you are managing every activity and you are sure that you are bringing out what you call an accurate, reliable result, you are maintaining quality. Now, when you look at it in terms of resource economy, everything here I've mentioned has to do with resources, which can be human resources and then the material resources. And as you can see, every activity goes with cost. So when you now look at it in a resource economy, that means, oh, everything is being costly. How do we go about it? How do we solve it? Then you now ask yourself, this is my lab. Am I meeting up to the quality based on the fact that I have to meet up all those requirements which require costs? So what are those requirements? Breaking them down, paying my personnel, having the right personnel, having the right equipment, having the right uh, materials I need to work with. Okay? So... In, when trying to facilitate activities in workshop and trying to make people implement quality in the research economy, we ask every laboratory to define the level you find yourself. Is that okay? 
So by the time you define the level, you find yourself. So if your lab is just running one activity, maybe urinalysis, you can maintain quality in that activity and then be sure that you're giving what is an ideal, reliable result. If you are into clinical chemistry, you can actually standardize quality in that clinical chemistry. And then with the checklist, you know exactly what you need to do at any point in time and do that. The, the disposables that we use for our laboratory investigations, the reagents we use keep going up day by day. And this, in return, affects what you do in the laboratory. And for us not to go through the cutways, and for us still maintain the standard of practice, that's why we have decided, we in Amsino Shodisolo chapter, have decided to bring together all medical laboratory practice practitioners in Lagos State and in Virus, because some people are going to join us online today. We've decided to bring them together and also to emphasize that it pays to maintain your quality of practice, it pays to do things right. It pays to maintain that standard practice that we are known for. Despite the economic recess, nobody should go beyond the practice of what we are known for. They also called for definite policies that will guide the practice of laboratory science and encourage local production of equipment. We talk about equipment that have been imported. People are manufacturing those equipment and they are selling to us. And that is a huge money. If you look at real-time PCR, which can go minimum 6 million, highest 37 million, who are preparing those machines? Why our people, our young scientists, our young children, people we have in the universities, not designing those equipment for us to have equipment we can do here? Why are the kits being imported? Do you understand? That's another aspect. Then there's this huge revolution now globally that has to do with digital technology. A lot of uh, equipment are now moving to what you call e-medicine, telemedicine. So we will finally get to a point where you will have companies abroad putting their equipment in our lab. We run the samples. And what they need from us is not that information, which is the bioinformation. Then they will analyze the data and do what they want to do with it. They will design biomarkers for us in this country. They will send the biomarkers, the, uh, the primers and the probe for us to buy. When we can, on our own, look at that direction of bioinformatics. So these are all areas we can diversify. Laboratory scientists are key players in the health sector whose work determines the course of treatment and outcome for patients. Medical Laboratory Science Council is the government, federal government arm of the regulatory arm of medical laboratory science practice in Nigeria. So she regulates both the public training and services. And so as a regulator, she, she, mounts, she mounts the gate of public safety of patients. And so that's why she's implementing all these as tools to ensure quality and safety of patients. If, pa if these things are not maintained, the implication is that patients will get wrong results and doctors will treat them based on those wrong results and life may be lost. And so we have policies in place to checkmate these excesses. We are like police standing in for the public health to ensure that private and public practitioners of laboratory services ensure that the interests of the patients are kept at check and they, are ensure, they, they ensure that the quality of laboratory results that are churned out to patients are optimum and they meet minimum requirements so that we ensure that the quality of health of patients are at optimum and that our clinicians will have the best of diagnostic outcomes to treat our patients with quality and then with that patients confidence and public health confidence will return to the laboratory sector and people will begin to have more confidence in our practice in Nigeria and thereby reducing tourism, maintain, uh, increasing revenue for the laboratories and increasing revenue for the nation. A healthy population, people often say, builds a prosperous nation. But many Nigerians are threatened on a daily basis and die needlessly due to diseases, poor health care, malnutrition and lack of access to relevant health information. The sorry state of our health infrastructure is also a major challenge. On Health Affairs, Oshomo Daniels brings these challenges to the attention of relevant authorities for a lasting solution. For sponsorship and other placements, please call the numbers showing on your screen. Health Affairs, 
your access to good health through relevant information. Yeah, we're custom agar to matter in our answer. Who are the data seni? Hey, Malama, guess who I'm not talking about? Yapa, Haba, 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 Jaskia ni malama. Gara kiji agora kido mimi kita bata. Domu wanda bejeba. Baza isaniba. Abin chike tare nandang ai maganisa. Abin chike shifa domu mota bata. Duk wanda ke tare har sama da sati biyu zai iya zama alamu ne na tarin fuka gwajin cutar tarin fuka da kula da mai cutar duka kyauta ne ku kira layin kula da cutar tarin fuka ta kasa alamba kamar haka uku uku hudu sifili domin samun karin bayani akan inda za a yi gwajin wannan sako ne daga ma'aikatar kula da lafiya ta kasa da tallafin mutanen Amurka welcome back 26th of June every year is UN International Day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking. We captured some stakeholders who had a lot to tell us about emerging trends in drug abuse and illicit trafficking. Please take a listen. Despite the incessant arrests by officers of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and other security forces, those involved in the business of drug trafficking into the country still find ways with their business. More worrisome is the latest trend when drugs are packaged in very attractive manner to lure children. Hydrocannabinol, THC, from cannabis sativa. Mm. But they have labeled it Coca-Cola gummies. Mm. Mm. So this one will be, I'm sure they must have laced it with something that is sweet. So children will take it in different formats so that, you know, children will not know, they will not think it's sweet. And when you take it, you see that they kidnap you. Or you start doing other things that are not worth it. It is to form a common front against these measures that the Crime Reporters Association of Nigeria, CRAN, decided to take the message of enlightenment to secondary school students in Lagos State. There's a lot of processes to rehabilitate somebody who is already addicted to drugs. What we have done today is to target students, teach them the dangers inherent in taking drugs. Avoid peer pressure and do their best to abstain from drugs. They shouldn't even experiment with it. Because the moment you experiment with it, you get hooked and your life does not remain the same. If your child used to be very, very quiet and all of a sudden he started to be outgoing, please watch it. Something is going on. If he's a very lively person before and then he now becomes very, very quiet, you have to look into it. Be the friend of your child and also know their friends. The choice of secondary school students, according to the organizers, is to catch them young. Uh, I want to believe they are going back home uh, to have ability to resist, uh, you know, peer influence and also to say whatever uh, is bothering them to their parents and even to their teachers so that they will not start the usage of substances. Some of the effects are brain damage, body paralysis, system breakdown. I've learned that drug addiction is not good. And also that when you take when your friend asks you to take drugs, that you should be able to make choice for yourself. You shouldn't follow bad friends that will lead you to making drug addiction. The UN International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking is marked 26th day of June every year to reawaken the public on the dangers inherent in drug abuse. The theme for the 2022 celebration is addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crises. When you take a drug without a prescription, especially the controlled drugs, you are abusing that drug. You need prescription. Therefore, we call on pharmacists to dispense controlled drugs, no matter how the patient needs it, under a doctor's prescription. We also talk to all the chemical companies and importing companies. Don't divert the chemicals that is meant for good production of drugs to those who want to use it for illicit business. Be careful of the kind of drug we use. And again, if you want to get any drug, we should seek for doctor advice before getting or taking any drugs we want to take. It's very, very important because most people have died as a result of ignorance. You understand? Some people combine apps 
with drugs. Some people combine mineral like Pepsi, Coke with drugs, which is wrong, in which they don't know. There are some components that are not meant to be combined with medicine. So we should just be careful how, how we take drug and uh, the use of drug in Nigeria generally. As I said, there are some drugs that we really don't know we abuse. For example, Amoxil. When you have an, when you have malaria, hmm, you go to the pharmacy to tell the pharmacy you have malaria, and there are drugs that you are meant to use for malaria. You understand? And there are drugs you are not meant to use. But it's so surprising because of lack of information, most people tend to get drugs that are not necessary for the treatment of malaria, like Amoxil. Now, what's the correlation between Amoxil? Amoxil is an antibiotic. Why would you take Amoxil when you are treating malaria? And taking drug that is not useful for what is happening to you or that is not uh, treatable for what you are having. It will cause more damage to your body. For example, some people have taken Panadol and Parastamol to the level that even if they take it, it doesn't work for them. And most people have died because of liver damage, because of these so-called drugs they have used. Some people can take four tablets of Parastamol in a day, which is wrong. Join NDLA. Join the Honorable Chairman, Chief Executive, Brigadier General, Bube Marua for us to redeem our nation Nigeria. We can do it if we all come together. We are not noted for this. And if we put our hearts to it, we'll bring Nigeria out of it. And sure, it's a done deal we are getting there. Let's not be complacent. Let's not hide children. Let's not cover up mistakes. Nib it in the board. And be sure you are involved with your children. Supervise, monitor them. Don't leave them just for their teachers and for uh, nurse hands. Also, be involved in their spiritual life, not only their academic life. You know, as a human being, we have various parts. Parents ought to be involved emotionally, socially, financially, in all ways in their children, please don't neglect the upbringing of those children. Nurture them well, because all the ones that are having all these ills, they are not from, they are not aliens, they are Nigerians. So if mothers and fathers take up their duty, support, speak out, don't stigmatize any child. Any child that you know is having problem with substance use disorder, reach us. We have experts, we have counselors that will do the right for them. The children, you shouldn't deny the fact that uh, my, it is not my child. It can be any child. In my own child, your child. So we must be prepared that suppose it's my child, what do I do? So we take up a responsibility that it could be my child. Always be drug related issues. Drug abuse is human related and so long as we have humans living, the issue of abuse will continue. Therefore, we will con it's a continuous thing until we all uh, see the reason for why we should stop uh, drug abuse. It's not a one-stop thing. We cannot say we have said it today so that, uh, no, we will continue and we are not relenting until we make a, a very uh, substantial uh, uh, improvement. A healthy population, people often say, builds a prosperous nation. But many Nigerians are threatened on a daily basis and die needlessly due to diseases, poor health care, malnutrition and lack of access to relevant health information. The sorry state of our health infrastructure is also a major challenge. On Health Affairs, Oshomo Daniels brings these challenges to the attention of relevant authorities for a lasting solution. For sponsorship and other placements, please call the numbers showing on your screen. Health Affair, your access to good health through relevant information. If you are just joining us, it's Health Affair on AIT. Next on the program is our nutrition segment. It's a common saying that you are what you eat. This is why we make it a point of duty to give you information about food items, fruits, and their nutritional value to help you make healthy choices on our nutrition segment every week. We welcome adverts from food and beverage manufacturing companies on this segment. Garlic is a part of the onions family, and the bulb of this typical herb consists of 10 to 20 smaller sections called cloves. While garlic is a common ingredient in every kitchen, 
In ancient times, it was highly valued for its numerous health benefits, which are still followed in many cultures till date. Garlic can be used as a bug repellent. It can be used against plague and for many other purposes. Due to its antibacterial and antifungal properties, some nutritional experts say garlic can also help prevent some form of cancer. Every 100 grams of garlic will serve you with about 150 calories, 33 grams of carbohydrates, 6.36 grams of protein. Garlic is also enriched with vitamins B1, B2, B3, B6, vitamin C, calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, sodium, zinc, and phosphorus. The high sulfur content of garlic onions gives it antibacterial properties that helps to keep the digestive system clean by flushing out toxins. Garlic also builds the immunity against common cold and prevents heart ailments by clearing up blocked arteries. The health benefits of garlic could go on and on. Some people cook with garlic onions, some chew it or blend it to extract the water. Why not give it a try today to boost your immune system? But remember to do so in moderation to avoid abuse. Please come with me to our clinical segment for tips on healthy living. In our perception segment, we value your contributions on how to improve human lives and the nation's infrastructure. How can those that are not yet into hypertension, how can they stop it? How can they prevent it? We say by measuring their blood pressure. My mama in the village, how will she measure her blood pressure when she has not even gotten enough food to eat? Really? When there is no primary health clinic, yes. like you have said, even in Lagos, can you please work towards reducing the price of these uh, machines used to measure the pressure? for these old people to have it. This is where we'll wrap it up this week. Thank you for spending your time with us. Please, let's do it again, same time next week. Don't forget to advertise your health products and services with us. we we'll do it for you at a subsidized rate. My name is Oshua Moa Danis. Please keep staying safe.